All right, guys, probably one time I will talk on one of these things, but it is really crowded in here, so it's hard for me to get in the tables. Um, pretty good show overall. I'm gonna make one more loop in here. And I'll try to get a couple cards in the videos. I might just have to do work more, more with my uh, phone to do some still pictures. But this is out of the fairgrounds in Salem, so pretty good overall. Some different stuff, a lot of different dealers I haven't probably seen before to uh, very rarely see. But catch you all here shortly. What's going on, everybody? Just got back in from the Salem, Indiana card show. So I had to start the video off a little bit different just to explain. It was a small building. The tables were really close together, and there wasn't much, like, walkways you could see through there, so it was kind of hard. You were elbow to elbow with a lot of people in there. So I didn't get a whole lot of footage. Um, what I could tell you is there were some dealers willing to work with you and some dealers that just, we're still in the bubble pricing and above. Uh, I did find some stuff. So these five stacks, five different deals that I did today. Some of the stuff I'll look at for PSA. Some of the stuff will go on whatnot, stuff like that. But overall, I want to say I'm probably around, spent around 400 today or so there. I think right at 400. I even picked Joey a card up. He'll show you that whenever it comes back from being graded. So the first deal I... Oh, this ain't the first deal. This was the first deal. My bad. My bad. I'm cheating, you guys. First deal. I always see this lady at the card show. She's one of the ones uh, that I always see uh, representing Salem, Indiana up there. And I always enjoy going through her stuff because there's always great finds in her stuff up there. There we go. So pick this up. Reggie Bush. I know Reggie Bush. But it's three color. It's rookie um, uh, jersey. So kind of cool. Gridiron collection. I know some people are still pretty big on to him and stuff. So I figured what the heck. We'll give it a shot. 2006. Huh. Old, old, old. But yeah. We'll give it a shot. I mean somebody out there might want a Saints fan. Picked up Jason Kidd jersey. From Fleer. Matumbo jersey piece. And this is actually Fleer Glossy tradition, so a little bit different. Carmelo Anthony status, a uh, little jersey piece there. I know you guys are going to see some trends here, but it's just what was up there today. Sam Darnold contenders, uh, rookie contenders uh, swatch. It's the green foil it came into. What do you call those things? The blaster boxes. So pretty cool stuff. I mean, nothing really, really expensive. Just some slower end stuff, you know, to use for down the line on stuff like whatnot and that. Because there are people out there that, you know, look for the relics still. They're not all about the base. And they're not like the song all about the, the base. But I'll always have a good time when I go through uh, some of the regular dealers. I get to see their stuff. All right, this was the next deal. This is what I wanted the most off the gentleman. I was eyeballing a couple other cards, but I, I decided to stick with this. Uh, 0203, if I remember right. Nope, I lied. I think it's 0405. But, um... The upper deck glass, and this is the numbered one out of a hunt. I'm so wait, yeah, out of a hundred. I had it right the first time, one thirty or thirty one out of a hundred. But you gotta look at it more this way. I'm sorry, I gave it to you guys backwards. All kind of fuzzies on my case. I just cleaned it up. I'm probably gonna end up grading this and just hoping we get an eight onto it. These are really hard grades. I was a fan of this stuff back in the day, and most of the stuff just brings back like the old days of collecting for me. What's cool about these cards is they have rounded corners. That's the way they were made. So you don't have to worry about really corners on to it. It's more to surface than anything. The one thing I saw was somewhere back in here, and it's this on a case. There was like in the white, like a little bubble piece on to it. But 
Yeah, well, you'll see what happens with it. Cool piece, though. This is not like the EX um, acetates. This is actually like plexiglass onto it. Sometimes they do well, sometimes they don't. Uh, I'm going to roll the dice on because of what I got going in the PSA because I think regardless of what I paid for this and spent 50 bucks and being graded, I think at the low end I'll break even onto it and it just has a lot of potential onto it. I also, because that I to, for that card there to make sense to me, I had them throw these in. Uh, with it, it's a it's a 70 tops Clemente, really beat up, off-centered. Probably like a PSA 1, maybe 1.5. One but I'll probably get that graded whenever bulk opens up later on. Then two Jordan upper deck black diamonds. I was a fan of black diamond when it came out. I love being able to try to pull whatever they had, the quad diamonds and stuff. Mostly uh, hockey I was more into than basketball. But figure I grab these. I got to look at them underneath the scope. They looked at least nines by my eye. Maybe I'll have that sneaky 10 in there or something onto it. You never know. But pretty cool Jordan cards there, too. I think those sell for around 5 bucks a piece. And I want to say probably that Clemente is probably like a $10 card after it's... Uh, well, once you grade, it might be worth a little bit more. But since I am a collector of Clemente, I must get it in case. Oops, hit the mic off when I was trying to clean the top of it. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, this was a huge bulk deal. It was mostly just for stuff for whatnot. Guy had a ton of this stuff in his box. I started flipping through to see who I could find with names on to it. Because what I see on whatnot being sold is like... The same stuff that I can get in every retail blaster box, hanger box out there. And stuff like this just goes unnoticed anymore. Kevin Garnett, upper deck, jersey piece. Uh, this is from Court Kings, Damian Lillard, performance cut. That's actually out of two ninety nine. dollars I had to look. I know some of these are numbered. A kid, upper deck game jersey. Another kid. Now, this Volley d -Botch, I'm sorry, this is not going to be for sale. This is strictly for Jacob. Um, he's the biggest bloody debauch collector I know out there, so I figured I'd get him one, especially one numbered out of 199. Uh, Tracy McGrady, George Gervin, duel from Upper Deck. What was this? Um, emulations. I, I, you know, I actually I forgot all about Tracy McGrady for the longest time. It's just a name that nobody really goes out after. Two Dirks, Upper Deck game jerseys. What's this? What? Oh, 809. Yep. Uh, ben Wallace, Dennis Rodman. Of course, more I got because of the Rodman on to this here. Because I already changed these cases out into newer newer cases. But, I mean, what the heck? I mean, for, I I think I averaged, like, when I just did this in my head because I was curious, I, spent, I think it was like $1.25 a card. Can't really go wrong with it. Upper Deck Game Jersey, Allen Iverson, D Tim Duncan. Now, that one had a little mark down here, but I threw it in there. Paul Pierce, Carmelo Anthony, dual combo out of four ninety nine SP game used. I was always a fan of these here. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, Sean Marion, dual relic from Authentic. And then one more Carmelo. A lot of Carmelo stuff. I just like, what the heck, I'll pick it up because he's not going to be in a league much longer. So nice little lot pickup of, off of somebody out there. And like I said, it was just stuff that I could use for filler stuff out on whatnot eventually. Kind of like a low-end day uh, type thing for sales onto it. Ooh, I don't know which one I want to go with. We'll go with this one next. So I did pick a card up for Joey. I'm going to show just because it's going off to be graded. This T-Law he wanted. Gold standard. This was a redemption. Really good shape. Gold standard, if you don't know, is really hard to grade. Like, you getting an 8 on something is probably like where most people would think is a PSA 9. A 9 is like a 10. A 10 would be like a black little BGS. Stuff's really hard to grade. This was a redemption. I just eyeballed it there. And, I mean, it didn't have a lot of the normal flakes and stuff onto it. And I told him, I said, your high grade's probably a 9, low grade an 8 onto it. I mean, you want a good one that's sticker, all on sticker, too. And this patchwork was better than most of the patches I saw out there. So that's going to go off grading for Joey. 
I did pick up my own T law and on campus. Um, I think that this was really cheap out there. I mean, I know it's Trevor Lawrence. We're not a fan of Trevor Lawrence, but the on campus kind of cool looking. I'll have to take a look at it. I didn't see anything real nose other than on the one touch itself. And I had them because I wanted to get a round number because I hate like stuff that ends in fives and not like in it multiples of 20. So I had them throw this in too with the deal. It's Trey Lance's Spectra Rookie. It's the uh, building blocks triple uh, thing. I believe that is supposed to be part of a football, but I thought it was more of like a glove, but I guess he doesn't wear gloves. So I have no idea now. And this was numbered, there it is, out of 99. And it's just funny as you read this, it just says the, the authentic memorabilia is not from any specific game or event. I guess that's how they get around that stuff. But a little bit on the edges and the corners, but Spectra. Somebody out there might want to end up wanting that. So, so far, I think the only thing I was going to grade out of this, it might be at, right off the bat, so T-Law and the uh, Kobe. Something I don't really talk about is a set that I've been working on for a very, very long time out of Upper Deck Ultimate. This is from 2004. I'll show you guys. Where's that? There it is. And I've been trying to do these graded. Um, there are different serial numbers across the board, what they're out of. So I picked up this one, the Dan Marino Ultimate Collection, out of 150, three-color patch. Don't know how well it'll do offhand. I mean, if I get an 8 on it, I'm really happy. But this is for me, for my collection, because I've been trying to put this set together forever. Uh, luckily, I have the biggest card, the Brady already done. Um, and then I got Joe Montana as well, too. This is out of 175 These, I was surprised at the prices on these raw. This was averaging almost like $75, $80. Bucks. I'm glad I got it for way under that. Uh, same with uh, Marino. I want to say Marino was doing like 130 is what I found out with like having a three color out of 150 and all that. And when you start playing this memorabilia, all this the way it looks and presents is just crazy on to it. But I did pick those both up today, which I'm going to look them over for grading. Nothing super crazy and exciting. I know normally like something big high end that I pick up. But overall, uh, for me, it was a good sh show to go to. I got to knock off two more of these off of my list. I picked up that glass Kobe. And then, you know, a little Trevor Lawrence action, just some stuff for uh, auction days and that. Um, some really nice cards out there today. There was a guy with a whole bunch of Dynasty stuff. I really couldn't get it. And in a real clip video clip you saw with the SGC, um, oh, I just like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I forget what he get, Les or something. Um my buddy actually picked that up up there, all the uh, vintage up there. I just wanted to get a quick video of it. So all that SGC basketball you saw, he picked up. Uh, we had to go on VCP comps and stuff onto it. But a lot of dealers working on prices up there. Uh, pretty much just like I always say, a lot of the same stuff at the same tables. Uh, if you could go up there and you have autographs and graded cards that aren't like those base and stuff that's in tons of retail... You do get a lot of attraction at your table. It's just the way it always goes. All right, guys. I think that is it for this video. I wanted to get this thing started and cranked out. Um, like I said, I couldn't get a whole lot of footage into it. There was just way too much traffic being bumped into and trying to do shots onto it all. I just I gave up. Uh, I think you guys get to, like the 30 second clip of me talking for once into a video uh, from the card show. And then I just had that real quick one because that guy was like sitting in a little corner right off to the side there. And it was easy to get around his stuff. Like I said, the rest of the stuff was really close together. Uh, traffic wise, just for the limited area in there made it look, I think, a lot busier with a lot of good fluid movement going through. Kind of different for the location where it was at because 
well, I was went into it with the GPS told me through a no outlet. But that's really about it, guys. I appreciate y'all watching the video. I will be back later this week with some more videos of some different things that I found uh, out there on the internet that I want to push out. But other than that, have a good week, and I will see you guys next video.